My name is Prince Dice, and this is the Prince of Investment, coming to you guys and girls live all the way from the beautiful city and state of Honolulu, Hawaii, via Denver, Colorado. As, they, as you are tuning in, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button, wherever you may be catching this at across the globe, and the people that are catching this live right now in Hawaii, or if you're catching the playback on YouTube, Facebook, all of the great stuff. But as always, ladies and gentlemen, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time, so we're going to jump straight into it. So today we got a very, very interesting topic. We're going to talk about, we all know what's been going on around the globe. We've been experiencing a pandemic and we, it seemed like we just left a pandemic, jumped right into civil unrest with riots going on around the country and which kind of left us economically in questions of who's going to make it, what's going to make it, who's not going to make it or whatnot. We've seen companies like Costco's who started to boom, Home Depot started to boom. We've seen companies like Zoom come out of nowhere and start to zoom up the market, but we've seen Classic companies that we grew up, restaurants that we grew up going to every day started to almost barely hold on. Like a company like Hertz, who would have thought a rental car company would disappear within a matter of months or potentially disappear in a matter of months. And a company like Zoom online is worth more than all of our airlines combined, according to market capitalization. That's a very, very crazy world. So today's episode, we're going to talk about what are some of the industries that got hit hard by the pandemic? What are some industries that are going to survive? Some industries that are going to survive and some industries that are just downright going to die. But, you know, I had to bring on our Uncle Uncle James here. He's coming all the way. He's out there in Wall Street, you know, or close to Wall Street or whatnot. Had to bring on a Wall Street veteran. You guys and girls, if you tune into the show, you already know Uncle James. You know, he's always a, a friend of the show. He's a regular here. He's a good contributor, a good friend of mine, good mentor of mine as well. And without further ado, James, how's it going, sir? Hey, how are you? Glad to be back. Oh, thanks for coming back. Now, uh, I know you're usually bullish. You're bullish, James. You know, last year you said the market was going to be a great year in the market. It started out a little shaky, but it turned out to be pretty good. Then 2020 came, and then it just seems like everything just lit on fire, everything that can go wrong. It's an election year. We're in the middle of a pandemic slash civil unrest. The police is talking about, they're talking about defunding the police. What is going on? So what are some industries, James, you got to say? What do you got to say out there? What are some industries? Let's start off with industries that are probably going to disappear. Who do you think is going to disappear and not Ooh. come back? Because some of these jobs are not going to come back. Who do you say? What do you got to say, James? Well, I, I like I look at it a little different. I think I think it's not so much disappear. I think there's going to be a big transition. I think things are going to change. And a lot of it may be for the better. And some of those changes were already underway to begin with. Like a lot of people were talking about uh, brick, brick and mortar retail was kind of disappearing anyway uh, because of the birth of, of, of Amazon and all this online shopping. Uh, I think the coronavirus, um, as well as the unrest, may have speeded it up in some ways. But now there's a little battle of what I call bricks versus clicks. And what's happened is because people have been locked up in their houses for three months, now, as the stores open up, what I've noticed is a lot of places, stores are very busy, not because you can't buy this stuff online, because people want to go out and socialize. And it's a way to get it's an excuse to get out and shop. And that and a lot of uh, high end department stores in the old days, like Bloomingdale's and things, they catered to that. The customers would come in there. They could shop anywhere, but they would come there because they wanted to socialize. They knew the salespeople. They wanted to talk to people. They wanted to get a, a cup of coffee or something. They like and they'd spend the day and like a bits around and talk to everybody and buy a lot of stuff. And I think so. You're seeing that battle is heated up again. And I think in retail, we're going to probably see a big fallout. Um, I would say all you're going to have left on, a, on the bricks and mortar side are probably really high-end stores mm. um, or very, high, very specialty stores where like they're destination stores, like it's the only place you can go. So you've got to go there to do it. Uh, and then on the very low end, you know, those like 99 cent stores and things like that, I mm -hmm. think you're going to have those, you know, and of course, some of the big mega like the targets and the Walmarts and stuff. Yeah. But I think I think some of these big stores, are, James, yeah, what, what do you think about a Barnes and Noble? You think Barnes and Noble will make it through? Oh, I wish they would. I wish there were more bookstores. Actually, I think that's one of the biggest. Uh, that's one of the greatest crimes of our time that people don't read enough. Um, I don't know. 
I think for a store like Barnes and Noble to do it, what they'd really got to do is whoop up, even have more authors in there and they'd have to work on their business model. Like I, when I go there, I say, this is an almost there's there. They, they were hot for a long time. Things have changed. It's really easy, obviously to buy books online. Um, so what do they got to do to change? And I think, I think they need more uh, interactivity in those stores. They need more, uh, more authors to come in. They need regular customers who write a book and go, this guy bought books here. Now he wrote a book and we're going to host his book. They need, they need to like do those kind of things. Um, they need so, to have Prince Dykes in the stores. Which you're yeah. Me. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I know a few authors, so I, you would be my first recommendation, but anyway, let's, let's look, let's like run down a little bit. So remember mm -hmm. early on when the COVID started, People went crazy over the supply chain. They said, oh, no, everything's made in China. What's going to happen? The supply chain is going to be a mess. Well, I think like many things about COVID, the hype over the destruction of the supply chain, whoops, was uh, probably overdone. It was like highly overdone. Um, however, it has led to some interesting things. For example, when I need a new mask, right, um, why, do, why do I have to buy it from China? Why can't I just get one made in Ohio? Like, why is this? So I think there's a couple of wrenches have been thrown in this big globalization effort. And I think you're going to see the return of a lot of localization for some production. Um, the other thing you're going to see is I, again, and I've been a big fan of this industry for years, but it never quite takes off, uh, is 3D printing. I think this 3D thing, I think people are going to have big 3D printers in their basement and they're going to make parts for cars and they're going to, it's going to be like, uh, like in the old days, you used to work in your garage and you changed oil for people to make money on the side. I think this is going to turn, there's going to be a whole sort of cottage industry uh, using 3D printing. And I, 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 I think it, I've been saying this since before Netscape was around. So I've been like hot on this thing and it, it's one of those things that's like, it hasn't quite happened. Mm -hmm. But this is another one of those industries where a lot of people are looking around and going, huh, this really should be a lot farther along than it is. Okay. Now, well, James, now let me, let's, I know you just spoke about 3D printing. I want right. to paraphrase this because, you know, I want to make sure we uh, zoom in on this. Mm -hmm. What companies are benefiting from the COVID-19? Ah, well, this is where we're going to get it. This is where my next was biotech. And biotech has always been an interesting industry. It's very hard to invest because generally in the past, you had to be like a chicken sitting on an egg. You sit on that stock, you sit on it, sit on it, sit on it. They have some big, huge news breaks out. The stock shoots up and you got to sell it right away. And that's how you'd make money off these things over the years. Eventually, there were a few like Amgen and like Genentech in the old days and, uh, and a bunch of stuff like that, where periodically they've had these huge rallies and you could trade them for a while. I think biotech is, the, is sort of what I would call is like the next big industry. It's going to be the new Facebook, Google, Amazon. It's going to be in there. And I think there's a bunch of companies that even if you look at the charts now, they're like zoom in. I would say like if you, if you just go biotech right on, like uh, uh, what is it? Um, I'll just give you the symbols. Uh, R-E-G-N. Uh, Gilead Scientific has always been one of my favorite for a long time. That's G. That's uh, what is that? G. Let me just see. I wrote these down. G-I-L-D. Uh, then another one you might want to look at, which is like, uh, this one I haven't really heard of, but I noticed the chart look kind of cool is, um, Invio, which is I N O is a symbol. Uh, now, and then well, James, why, why the biotech industry, why are you getting so bullish? Because this is what, this is what's going on. We have this crazy COVID and at the end of the day, a lot of this stuff was hype over the death toll. But if you really look at it, what is this, what did COVID teach us? Right now, I'm reading a book about Alexander Hamilton, and in like 1793, there was a malaria outbreak. I think it was malaria or yellow fever in Philadelphia. And what did they do? People abandoned the city. They blocked off areas. They isolated people. They quarantined people. Uh, they, you know, they did all this. People who were there weren't allowed to travel anywhere else. There was 
It's all the same stuff. So you mean to tell me for 200 years, we're still dealing with this stuff the same way? We're still, we're still hiding at home. We're quarantining people. We're locking things down. We're like doing, we're still, we're, we, so we need biotech to address a lot of issues. One would be, um, the big thing would be antibody research. So in other words, you'd know right away if somebody had it, were they immune to it? That's probably the first and foremost. The second thing is testing. We need to be able to test really quickly so we can track things and we, be, we need to be able to deploy that testing. The third thing is going to be like watches and stuff like you already probably have an Apple watch that tells you how many steps you took and stuff like that. We're going to need on our, our watch. They're going to have to add in. Oh, my temperature is a little high. Maybe I'm getting sick. Maybe I'm maybe I'm sweating too much. Maybe I have COVID. Maybe I have the flu. Maybe I you know, who knows? Maybe my heart isn't working right. So we're going to need more of that. Then we also need home tests because you know what? I don't want to wait in line anywhere. I don't wait in line anyway. I'm old fashioned. I don't wait online, period. I, I, the only time I'd probably wait online is if I went to the cash machine and money was just coming out of it nonstop. But I might wait online for that. But other than that, no. And uh, so I'm one of those people. I see a line. I just go somewhere else. And um, in fact, I'm so bad with lines. In the old days when I was a kid and I used to go to nightclubs, I used to go really early and I'd be the first one there just so I didn't have to wait online. And I know it wasn't cool, but I didn't want to wait online. So what, what do you got to do now? Now we want home testing. We want to be able to test all these things at home and follow up. So why can't we do a COVID test at home, send it, maybe do a follow up, maybe do all these things to give data. Now, the other scary thing that's going on is Apple and a couple other com and Google are now putting all kinds of trackers in our phones. So if I gave you COVID and we hung out, my phone might know that, that I got sick and it would text your phone or send a message. And then your phone would send a message to everybody you talk to that would, you know, that, that you might have, so you can trace everybody so you could follow it up. To me, that kind of stuff is kind of spooky because they always say the data is secure. It's never secure. Mm. It's always being looked at or manipulated by somebody. So biotech is like a big, is a big thing. The other, the other one, the fourth one, our fifth one is Moderna, which is MRNA. They have, they, they're pretty close to having a vaccine for, for COVID-19. At least they've been pushing it. Moderna, and that's okay. a Spanish one. And so a lot of these have either uh, some kind of um, uh, uh, vaccine or some kind of therapeutic that after once you get sick, then you, do, then you can take this drug and it will make you feel better. Kind of like, you know, you take uh, Tamiflu if you have the flu or whatever, or you take aspirin if you have a headache. You know, it's like a therapeutic thing. Now, the next thing that's a big deal, and you may have seen this a little bit, I don't know, though, is a lot of people were working from home. So, but I think this is a permanent change. Mm. I think this is going to impact commuting. I think commuting is mm -hmm. going to come back, but not as much because there are more and more people are going to go into work. Maybe they're going to go into work three days a week instead of five. Okay. I th well, James, then, I got a question for you, right? Yeah, go ahead. You just, you just, you, you know, you kind of shook me with this one with the biotech. I wasn't thinking you were going to come with this yep. one. Oh no! Now, I, I, but what I want to add, we have time. <laughs> <laughs> but what we're going to do, we're going to, uh, we're going to go into a break. And we're going okay. to come out of the break. And after this break, we're going to talk about the exact companies you named. And we're also okay. going to touch on, I want to get your take on companies like Uber. But we're going to talk about that after the break. Uh, okay. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Aloha. I'm Keisha King, host of Crossroads in Learning on ThinkTech Hawaii. On Crossroads in Learning, our guests and I discuss all aspects of education here in Hawaii and throughout the country. You can join us for stimulating conversations to enrich, enliven, and educate. We are streamed live on ThinkTech bi-weekly at 4 p.m. on Mondays. Thanks so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. Aloha. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. 
We're going to talk. We're talking about the different sectors. We got our guest on. He brought up a very good point about biotech, how the biotech industry, how he's very strong in that. He made a pretty good, strong conviction about, hey, with the coronavirus and the COVID-19, people will start to look at the pandemic, the uh, market totally different, how it will make a demand in the biotech industry. Now, we know to invest into the biotech industry, there's several ways you can do it. You can probably purchase an ETF, maybe a mutual fund, or you can buy direct companies. So first, we're going to ask him, what, um, how would he invest in the biotech? And then he made a good point where he said that, hey, uh, people are not going to be transporting, trans, you know, moving around as much as they used to. And I want to get in there and ask him about those ride shares. But first off, James, how would you invest into the biotech industry? Would you get that ETF or would you pick particular companies? And if you did, why? Well, I would, f- frankly, I would pick some, I would go directly for some companies. Um, I just, I feel better with that. Uh, ETFs are cool. I, I think they're a good, they're a good option, especially, um, if you're, if you don't want to focus, you know, it low, it lowers your risk because you buy a lot more, you buy a lot more companies, you diverse, diversify, right? Um, I, I, what I be careful with, with biotechs is they have a, they're traditionally very hot and cold. And you don't buy them like if you're looking for earnings growth or things like that, this is not the industry for you. These things get hot and cold. And by the time you find out that drug doesn't really work, the stock went from 200 to a nickel. And you're, you're just like, you're still drinking your coffee and you're like, what just happened? And like, then you find out 20 minutes later that the, their trial was a failure and the stock blew up. So it's a, it's, um, it's a, you have to be patient. And if you make big profits on it, you got to be able to be prepared to take your money and run. And, and also, if you get a hit and you do a bullseye and it works really well, um, don't think you're going to replicate it. You have to be really it's, – it's not like, like – like, they just work. It's, it's a lot more uh, – we used to call them story stocks. You got to look for the cool thing. What are they trying to do? Is it a product that there's a market for? Is there a big need? Blah, 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 blah. Is it the right price? And boom. And then the other thing that happens is often they do hit and then some big drug company like Pfizer or Merck comes along and buys them. So that's another way you can make money. So you have to be, this is, I would say there's a lot more risk in biotechs than you even realize. They're a, they're, they're really a, you're, you're really on air with a lot of these. So, so I would just generally recommend people to just be cautious with them. Now with the companies that you did pick, you did select, why did you pick them? Well, they're all working on something for COVID right now. And then what I did was basically I just rattled off. What are all the biotechs working on COVID? And then the, I charted them all, and the first the f- five that I named all had pretty cool charts. And I was like, okay, that's cool. Now, hold <laughs> so, on. When you say a pretty cool chart, what is a pretty cool chart? I'm looking for, you know, I, we, I've been doing this a long time, so sometimes it's hard to explain. But mm-hmm. I use I traditionally learned the Elliott wave, and so I'm looking for, like, stocks kind of when they're going, they kind of have this, like, they make, like, three moves up and two down, three moves up and two down. And uh, there's a lot of chart patterns, like, there's certain, like, W's or formations. We all hear about it, like, when you first trade stocks, you hear about double tops and things like that. Mm -hmm. There's, like, inverse triangles, and there's, like, there's certain patterns I look for that historically, when when I've gotten into those patterns, I always made money. Um, so if it's got the mojo, if it's got a good story and a good, and a, and a good chart, um, then I'm almost back to the old internet days where if you buy the stock, if it has a cool name and a cool symbol and and it, and you, and it doesn't, and you don't, it doesn't make money or do anything. You just, as soon as it makes money or anybody figures out what the company actually does, you sell it. So that's like, so, Mm. so biotech's kind of, you know, they, they work on the, what we used to call the Hopi Hopi. Like they're, they they kind of run on and they can, they can, the air can come out of them so fast. You won't even believe it. You'll be like, Whoa, like you'll, you can see a hundred dollar stock go to $2 in like wow. a couple of days, like really fast. Now I got to ask you this question. You made a good point before we went into the break and you know, I'm on the Uber train right now. Right. Right. I think that they can figure it out. I think they can work it out. They're the number one in the industry. And I don't want to go into that, but you said that people won't be traveling as much. What do you think is going to happen? How will well, people travel and what you think is going to be happening? Okay, so here? let's get, let's get back to let's get back. First, people are going to work from home. I think this is a permanent change and it's something that people have been talking about for years. 
So what does that mean? Well, it means we're going to need a lot of technology for people to be able to do that. And one of the big problems for me is bandwidth because we're still, we still have this problem where even though we have this, we have all this fiber optic cable, that last mile to your house is still for most people is too slow. So how is that going to be addressed? And I also found a bunch of sort of what I would call um, telecom equipment companies that I think are kind of nifty to buy. So they're kind of doing those kind of things. Now, this brings up Uber. So now you have people working from home. And in generally, it, up till COVID, and COVID showed how this was an issue. Over the last 10 years, because of the internet and because of all this interconnectivity, more and more this thing called the gig economy has come up. And Uber is one of those things. Uh, Airbnb is one of those things. Mm. But there's a lot of small things. Like, for example, I do consulting for Nespresso. Nespresso is really a gig job. They pay me by the day and by the piece and they give me a schedule. And sometimes I don't work at all. And sometimes I work a whole bunch and depending on what they want me to do. Um, I'm not an employee of Nespresso. So what the problem is, is when we don't work for three months, somebody like me could not collect unemployment because of that job. Right. right. But so now you have, so you have employees. Those are people who work for a company. Yes. You have what we used to call freelance people who are kind of like consultants and stuff who come in who don't have those. Well, now you have this hybrid because we have, there's a lot of people like, for example, the tour guide business in New York, New York State said tour guides can file for unemployment, even though it's fundamentally a gig job. Now, I've had... Now, are tour guides paid depending on how many people show up for the gig? I mean, how many people they give a tour to or is it salary? Is it kind of... It's it, it, it different, many different ways. Usually it could be salary, but most of them get paid... Uh, a, a fairly significant hourly wage plus tips. And so obviously if you have more people on the tour, you get a lot more, you make a lot more money. Um, and tips? yeah, you, yeah. The tips can be just, it, it can be really, it, I wouldn't be doing, I mean, it's, it's, it can be beautiful. It's, wow. and then of course you have other things. So if you can do, for example, I take a school group. I, you bring a school group up from Georgia, from your hometown. Mm -hmm. We do a wall street tour. We design it. And then, what we're going to do with that group is we're going to have them play something called the trading game. And I'm going to teach them all how to trade like Wall Street professionals in five minutes. So guess what? I'm going to get paid for the tour. I'm going to get extra money for the trading game. And because you're a school, I'm probably going to get a tip built into the payment. So I'll get three times. Mm. So, so you can do, so it, it can be, it, it's kind of a fun, you know, it can be kind of fun, but anyway, it's a gig job. Okay. But so what's happening now, as you see, in some states like California are passing laws that say, no, all those drivers for Uber actually work for the company. Mm -hmm. Now, frankly, I work corporate because I worked on Wall Street for a while and I'm, I'm not really good at it. So I didn't want to, I, I, that's why I didn't want to go. Once I got out of it, I decided I, I just can't go. I got to do something else. I just, it doesn't work for me. Um, but uh, so now you have, you have, because COVID laid bare, you had tons of small, really super small businesses, like micro, like one or two man businesses. You had all these gig workers like me um, who got laid off now, who aren't working for three whole months, and we can't really collect anything. So we're kind of hung out to dry here. And if you know your economic sense, you know most of the jobs are created by small businesses. And those are, you know, particularly in states like New Jersey and New York and for a while Connecticut and Pennsylvania, there was a total lockdown. So, you know, we didn't get, we didn't, Philly Faces hasn't been operational for three months. That's a company owned in Philadelphia. We didn't get unemployment. We didn't get anything. And it's too small to get all this mm -hmm. other benefits. PPP. Also. Yeah, all that stuff. So we're, 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 you know, we're on a, we're on a limb sawing the wrong way. You know, we're sitting out there like, we're like, we're like, you know, <laughs> we're like, <laughs> we're out on the street with a cup, you know, but we can't mm -hmm. do that because there was social unrest. So we have to hide now as we can even do that anymore. <laughs> right. So we, so, so I think also what's going to happen is you're going to have a new third class of sort of quasi employee, maybe non employee, whatever, who's going to like, you're going to have a new classification. So you're going to still have freelance, which is going to be like your traditional gig workers, you're gonna have employees, and then you're going to have this hybrid thing.
mm. that probably could qualify for because this laid bare. I mean, who can go three months and not get paid? It's almost impossible. So it's, you know, I mean, no matter who you are, it's almost impossible. Well, I mean, that's the question, Joe James. Right. Do you think that Uber will thrive in the future in a society? Well, I think then, I, then you bring up, so people are working from home. So now I'm working from home and I'm going to use a lot more services that I may not have otherwise used. Like, so I may order in food all the time or even order my groceries because I'm home and it mm. saves me time. I might Uber around instead of how I won't need a car. Maybe I don't need a car anymore. And I'll just Uber whenever I need something. And so I, I, I did I, see someone the, the iterate on that. I did see somebody talk about that. That they think that that one day that the world of personal cars is going to go away. Can you see that? Well, it's a it's a it's a, first of all, it's a, it, as much as I love cars, they're a huge waste of money. It's an enormous waste of money. They're a terrible investment. They're like they're like the worst possible thing to spend money on. If you want to get rich in life, drive drive a beater car as long as you can. Mm. To put off buying a new car as long as possible. It's it's it, they're just a huge. It's just a from a financial standpoint, it's a monumental ripoff. Now, don't get me wrong. I love to, I love to drive a beautiful car, and I I love and I love antique cars. So that they're even worse because they're toll money pits. You can't even you can't mm. even drive down the driveway without something breaking. So mm. you know everything costs tons of money. It takes forever to fix. So it's it's but so so that could be. But then the then there's then there's other issues like like what about all the stuff we're using from home? We're, like now we're using Zoom. Mm. Well, this is pretty cool because this is really the two of us. But I've been on some pretty bad Zoom meetings where where you know there's like a cat sitting on a like <laughs> like a dog sitting in front, or people put like pictures of themselves up so you think they're on the call and they're not. Oh. They're like in the they're like in the background cooking or something. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just bad and uh so you know we have um you know you have you have you have i think a lot of people are zoomed out now i'm not a meeting person the only time to me to the only time to ever do meetings is with a potential client any other meetings are totally a waste of time and they always have been it's not a new thing i just i think that's that's one of the reasons yeah. i'm not corporate like i just think all meetings are a waste of time one second I, we got a question here that says right. yes work at home but who is going to be on top zoom oh all the work at home people google meeting microsoft cisco you know you got cisco webex uh google me microsoft skype was kind of in the game but microsoft on yep. skype and zoom yep. who do you think is going to do it from the work well at home game? zoom got a big break at the beginning but there's a lot of security issues about zoom and and it, it it's almost scary if you really pay a lot of attention to stuff like that so you you know i i think there's there's going to be different systems just like just like i don't think zoom put skype out of business skype is just different it's like facetime right it's like a different it's like different and i think there's going to be a lot of different applications now and there's going to be a lot of people creating applications because people are going to work from home maybe they're going to commute in two or three times into the big city Maybe they can move all the way out to Wyoming and you could still think I'm like, I, I live in big sky country, but you could think I work in New York because I have a cool background like you. I have the New York Stock Exchange. I just press the button. And even though I'm on a cattle ranch in the middle of Wyoming with a satellite dish, I, I may be able to work like that. It might be, that may become the norm. Okay. Um, so then there's a couple other things. There's like, then that also brings up education. Because a lot of schools have gotten into remote learning because of COVID. Mm. So the schools are all closed, like in New Jersey. But guess what? Remote wor learning is working out really well, which schools should have done this 20 years ago, but they, they're very slow to, you know, because they're very bureaucratic mm -hmm. and they're very slow. Um, so now the realization has come that, hey, well, college students do a lot of this. High school students and probably either what I would call junior high school or you might call middle school could mm -hmm. certainly do a lot of their curriculum online. Okay. They'll well, James, we, we gotta get wrapping. We gotta get we gotta get going. You know, our time is okay, running. Okay, 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 okay. So how do you want to leave people? Uh let people know how can they follow you and you know, share your final thoughts, what you gotta say on this. 
Well, a couple of first, uh, a couple of things about me, because I always forget just, you can find me, I have a Facebook page called Unofficial Wall Street. You can always find me there. I also have YouTube videos, which I'm now kind of calling the Wall Street Minute. They're only like, a, they're like 59 seconds. They're really quick. They're not in depth like you do in your shows, but they're like little quick things that come up in the news and I just talk about it real fast. Um, I would say what's what I'm I'm more I think COVID might have pushed a lot of evolution that was already happening faster forward. Mm, and right. again, because I'm always Mr. Optimist, I just think people should be optimistic about the future. I think, well, this is a tough time, and a lot of us are re-examining our life choices now because I'm even thinking I, you know, tour guiding is going to be weak for a while now. Uh, mm -hmm. in New York. So what am I going to do to replace that income? Well, I, I already, cause I, cause I have a, a million black backup plans, including, you know, joining the space force and stuff like that. So that's like, that's like plan okay. E, that's like plan E. So we'll like, <laughs> but you know, you, 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 I, I just think people should be optimistic and look at this um, as an opportunity, look for the opportunities, look for the change, embrace the change. Mm, okay. Well, James is always, Uncle James, as I like to call him, it's always a pleasure to have, have you on. Until the next time, you know, my name is Prince Dykes. This is the Prince of Investment coming to you guys and girls live all the way from the beautiful city and state of Hulu, Hawaii, and Think Tech Hawaii. But until the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever else crazy you see us do around the globe, peace, be safe. I'm out, and thank you.